Hey Ice Spot fans, this is Wally with Supreme Ice Pods. And Gecko fans, and Reptile fans in general, because this video is all about you. Have you ever wanted to take close-up pictures of your animals, but you just can't get that perfect shot? Well, I have some solutions for you, and it's going to save you a ton of money. So join me in this video on how to take better close-up pictures of your animals without it costing you an arm and a leg. Did you notice? Did you notice the new cup? This is from Bob and Family. This is what, such a great idea. It says, I love spreadsheets. I wonder if it says the same thing on the... No, don't do that, Wally. Don't spill it all over yourself. Yes, it does say it on the other side. Thank you very much, Bob. I really appreciate that gift. Hey, fans and community, if you really like what we're doing here at Supreme Gecko, Supreme Isopods, Supreme Aquaria, I would greatly appreciate it if you visited the site in the description and on the first pinned link and showed some support. We greatly appreciate it. That support is going to go right back into the equipment and things that make the, these videos possible. It's certainly not required, but it's certainly appreciated. Here's a quick shameless plug for another member in our community. Wes Krasuski does great t-shirts. This one says, got duckies. I can't pull it up that far. Hopefully you saw it. I'll put his link in the description. Visit him, grab a t-shirt. As you know, I've been in this hobby a long time. I've taken a lot of photos. I actually took photos of our fish back 25, 30, 100 years ago. You would think that I would be an expert by now. Well, I'm absolutely not. It takes a lot of practice. I'm good. I'm not an expert whatsoever. But I tell you what, I do play around with different things to try to get the best photos that I possibly can. And I love close-up photos. If you have animals, you want to take close-up photos, you've tried in the past, you want to post them to Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or wherever you want to post them, you've tried it, you just don't get that close-up feel of your animals, I have a possible solution for you and it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg whatsoever. And in this video, I'm going to show you some options for a camera, but I'm also going to show you some options for your phone as well. Back a couple of years ago, I did a lot of research on cameras. I wanted to go away from our smartphone and get a decent camera to take some good pictures of our animals, of our crusted geckos, of our isopods. A lot of research. It came Christmas time about a year and a half ago and I picked up a Canon 50 and I just absolutely love this camera. So many features, so easy to use, so lightweight. I, I just fell in love with this camera. I would show you the camera, but I'm actually using it right now. So I just told you all the good things about the Canon M50. The bad thing is that it doesn't really, from the kit lens that comes with the camera, and this is typical of other cameras as well, it doesn't take good close-up pictures. So back to the computer I went, and typed in macro lenses for M50 and I found lots and lots of suggestions. Wait, what? Over a thousand dollars for a macro lens? I paid about five hundred and fifty dollars for our M50. I wasn't about to pay a thousand dollars for a macro lens. It just was out of my budget. But there's other macro lenses out there that are far less expensive than this one. But still, I didn't want to pay a fortune for a macro lens. So back to the computer I went searching for a macro lens that was a little bit less expensive than these options and guess what I found? A great package that's far, far less. This is a package of close-up lenses. Great little package and it's like 10 bucks. I thought for 10 bucks I can't go wrong. I'll go ahead and try it, see how it works. Now it comes with four different close-up lenses, a 1, a 2, a 4, and a 10. How many times have I used the one? None. The two? None. The four X? None. The 10? All the time. The one, two, and four just really don't give that much of a difference in photography. The 10 really gets you close to the subject and gets a better, clearer image of your subject. I want to mention as well that this lens can fit on many, many different cameras, not just the M50 Canon. With this lens, you have to get about 6 to 8 to 10 inches away from your subject so you can get a better, clearer close-up picture. So let's go ahead and see some examples of what this lens can do for you. 
So I ran downstairs, grabbed a culture of Armadillidium, Clue Guy, Montenegro, the clown isopods, and positioned them and started taking some pictures. I took a couple of pictures with the M50 without the macro lens, and this is what they turned out to be. Now this is a decent picture, especially if you blow it up into a bigger picture. The detail is still there. It looks halfway decent. I then threw on the 10x macro lens on the camera and positioned the isopods a little bit closer to the lens, about, again, six to eight inches away, and started taking some pictures. You can see that these are really nice pictures, great close-ups, great detail. And again, if you blow these pictures up using this M50, you're going to get great, great detail. So that really worked like a charm. Let's go ahead and grab another isopod and take a look at them. I ran back downstairs, grabbed the Cuberus red skirts, the white ones. These are called white angels from my understanding. Brought them back up and set them up. Same procedure, I took some regular shots and then I took some close-up shots. What I was really trying to focus on is the eyes. There was some thought that these animals, these Cuberus red skirt, the white ones, are albinos because their eyes are pink. So let's see if we can see the actual eyes of these animals. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this picture and see. I really felt that that photo shoot went pretty well. What do you think? Leave a comment down below. Let me know if you have a camera that these close-up lenses would work for you. Okay, so you don't have three, four, five hundred, a thousand dollars to spend on a camera. There's another solution for you. Let's talk about that right now. Do you have a cell phone? Well, I guess you can't see my cell phone. Hold on. There's my cell phone. I, well, okay, it's really a man purse for a cell phone. I hold all of my uh, credit cards, my driver's license. Are you looking at my credit card numbers? Don't do that. I use this for everything. I have three computers here, but I probably spend more time on this phone than I do on all these different computers. Don't ask me why I have three different computers. That's in another video. Not only am I on social media all the time with this phone, I've found that it takes amazing pictures. I bet you you're the same. I bet you you've been playing around with your smartphone and you find the pictures that these things produce nowadays to just be fantastic. But do they take good close-up pictures? Well, let's take some pictures with the smartphone. Let's see how they turn out. But I am going to remind you, I have a close-up option for this smartphone coming up in just a moment. So I set up those clown isopods again, and I took some pictures with the smartphone. And again, I'm using a Galaxy, an Android phone, if that matters. I think iPhones are probably going to do the same thing for you. I felt the pictures that I took with my smartphone really looked great. At 1x or 1 times magnification, I thought that they turned out really, really clear and crisp. So I had to go ahead and try at 2x or 2 times magnification. Then I tried at 3x and finally I tried at 4x. I took some pictures at all four different magnifications and I think that they all turned out pretty well. Now realize though, Higher than two magnification is just making the image bigger on your phone or on the picture. It's really not magnifying that animal, that isopod, that gecko, any closer. So if you blow up that picture, if you zoom in, if you try to make it a bigger picture, like if you were taking in that picture to a Photoshop and getting a picture on your wall, it would be a lot more blurry at 3x and certainly a lot more at 4x. It just wouldn't look the same. Having done the research for the Canon M50 to try to find a close-up lens for it, I had to do the research to try to find a close-up lens for my smartphone. At about the same time, I watched a video from IsoBuddies and Jonathan had a guest, uh, Cheyenne, on there. I'll add his links to the description down below. You can go check out IsoBuddies and Cheyenne's page. But Cheyenne was mentioning that he had tried a close-up lens for his smartphone. He gave a description of the item I went out to Amazon and guess how much it was. And you know what? It's even less today. How can you go wrong at this price? This little kit, and it fits in about the palm of your hand here, has a macro lens, a wide angle lens, and a fish eye lens. Pretty cool for about 10 bucks or less. It clamps onto your smartphone very easily. 
So how does it perform? Let's go ahead and take some pictures with my smartphone and see how the pictures turn out. Now I will mention that this wasn't easy to take pictures with the smartphone. With the close-up lens on it, you had to get super close to your subject matter to make it all come into focus. I was probably within two or three or four inches at any given time to the isopods to make sure that they all came in focus. This is tricky. What I found was that I would hold a piece of cork bark and balance it on the side of the tub to try to get it to stay still and then move it back and forth, moving it back and forth toward the lens to try to get it in focus. And I was just reeling off picture after picture after picture to try to come up with the best picture that I possibly could. It's not easy, but let's take a look at those close-up pictures. So what do you think? Are these close-up lenses something that you might try in the future? Do you already have a close-up lens? Let me know how it works for you. Let me know how those close-up pictures of the isopods that I took today look to you. Are they crisp? Are they clear? Are they focused? What do you think? Would you go out and get one of these close-up lenses? My final verdict is that that smartphone close-up lens takes some amazing, amazing close-up pictures. Better than I had anticipated, better than I had expected. But the difficulty of using it is extreme. It was really, really tough to get an exact focus on those animals to be able to take some pictures. If you need extreme close-ups, this is the way to go. This is the method that you want to try. Now, if you want a better quality close-up picture, I would suggest the close-up lens for the camera. And again, for me, it's the M50. It just gets a crisper, cleaner, more detailed picture. If you're in this hobby deeper than I am and you really want some good macro shots, obviously the suggestion is go out and get a good macro lens. If you have the money. Let me see if I do. Nope, my wallet's empty. And one point that I really want to emphasize here is that you absolutely need good lighting. The better the lighting, the better your pictures. Absolutely. Now, if you enjoyed seeing those Cuberus Red Edge White Angels, oh my gosh, weren't they beautiful? I'm going to go ahead and throw another link up right here that you can watch and enjoy. In the meantime, thank you very much for watching this video. I appreciate it. We'll see you next video.